Welcome back. With tax season just a few months away, a new study shows that most Americans wait for their tax refund check before they actually head to the doctor's office. Research by the J.P. Morgan Chase Institute finds that health care spending is 60 percent higher in the week after people receive their tax returns compared to any given week in the 100 days before. Joining me right now in a Fox Business exclusive is Deanna Farrell. She is J.P. Morgan Chase Institute founding president and CEO. Deanna, good to see you. Thank you. Happy Thanks to be here. Thanks so much for joining us. This is an alarming statistic that you bring to our attention because it, it almost suggests that people, even if they're sick, they're not taking care of themselves. They're just waiting because they can't afford it. I think that's right. I think even if they're sick, even if they have health insurance, what we find is if they don't have cash in the bank, and most Americans don't have enough cash in the bank, uh, they won't seek care until they get that cash in the bank. And we see that this is particularly true. You mentioned the 60 percent rise. This is across all Americans. But for those people who are most cash constrained, meaning they have no credit card, they have no liquid assets, that number is even higher. It's 83 percent rise in health care spend after that cash infusion comes in. So we know, in effect, that um, people are spending when they have a rise in income. And we ask ourselves, well, is that that they're seeking care or that they're just paying for bills, that they did get the care when they needed? And what we learn uh, through this work is that there's a little bit of both, but the lion's share of the issue is people are deferring care until they have that cash inflow. So, so uh, they're, they're not taking care of themselves because they can't afford it. This brings so many other big issues into the forefront. Yes, I would, I would start with one, which is for a, for a while we have been, um, with good intention, I think, pushing for high deductible health care plans. The view there is that the patient has skin in the game, is more likely to make better decisions. Um, but if, in effect, people don't have the cash to make the decision at the right time, uh, and the deductibles are high enough that people, in effect, have to wait for liquidity to come in to get care. We're not talking about a well-placed uh, uh, market for consumer decision uh, for consumer decisions in this space. And the thing we would worry about and do worry about is deferred care is not a good thing. Healthcare issues don't age well. The longer you wait to address a problem, uh, the longer, the more likely it becomes more expensive and more problematic. Yeah, and, and in terms of the, the tax changes that we've seen, eliminating the individual mandate, does that give you any uh, pause? I mean, do you think that that would be helpful, given the fact that this was an, an, an enormous cost for individuals, not to mention the cost that we saw on business as well? well I think to the extent that the individual mandate um, uh, reduces the number of people who are receiving insurance, have insurance in the long run, they will face huge, bigger problems as it relates to catastrophic care. Uh, that's what insurance is really good for. These cash flow dynamics, in effect, are true, as I mentioned, for people with or without insurance, because for most people, um, the health care expense of $400 is enough to create this kind of dynamic. The typical tax refund we were talking about is $3,100, $3,100. That's enough liquidity for people to go seek care, but that's often... Uh, higher than the or the same amount as the deductibles that, that people are faced with. The J.P. Morgan Chase Institute. Tell me the kind of data that you have, because you actually get a chance to see all the spending habits of the clients. Yes, um, it's really quite powerful because part of the reason this study is so exciting and so unique is uh, we are tracking daily transactions of people's inflows. Think of it as income and people's outflows. Think of it as spending and understanding the connections between those. Um, very hard to get these high-frequency data. You certainly wouldn't survey someone every day and asking them what sure. they're doing. And often surveys will give you the wrong answers because people either don't know or forgotten uh, or otherwise. Um, and so we are constructing on an anonymized basis, meaning we don't know what the names of the individuals right. are, exactly what's happening. And tax refunds are a particularly interesting example because even though most people know how much they're going to receive, in a tax refund, they don't know what day they're going to get it. And it turns out people will receive it any day from end of January to beginning of May. Um, even the day when most people get tax refunds is only 3% of people, 4% of people getting tax refunds that day. That allows us to say on that day when you, that family gets a tax refund, 
observe their spending behavior. Wow. And it's literally on that day and for a week after that we see that 60% increase in healthcare spend and it stays elevated for 75 days after that. 75 days. And then it goes back to its very normal range, which mm. is really, uh, really powerful. And, and we can only see that because we have this high frequency real spend view uh, that comes from daily transactions. What else are they spending money on? We see them increase spending on a lot of other categories uh, because people tend to spend money as soon as they have it. Uh, but if you take the most liquidity constrained people, the people with the least cash on hand, so to speak, these would be the debit card holders, we see that their spend on health care increases by 83 percent, whereas their spend on all other categories increases by just over 50 percent. So wow. it's true in general. It's particularly true for health care. So they really are waiting to get the money in order to go to the doctor. They're deferring their care, and that could be a cause for concern in some instances where waiting for care makes the health care situation worse or more costly. Really an important uh, development and an important story. Thanks very much, Deanna. Thank you so much. For Thanks for sharing that. Deanna Farrell there, J.P. Morgan Chase Institute.